Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today we're talking about Luminar AI Update 2. This is the newest version of Luminar AI. It's just out today. If you're a current owner of Luminar AI, it is a free update. If you're not a current owner, you can purchase Luminar AI at the link down below. This is the update many people have been waiting for that include the automatic reflections of a sky replacement. It's super cool. I'm having a lot of fun with it. But there's a lot of other cool stuff. There's new camera support, a couple of new file formats. They now have transformable texture overlays, which is super powerful. I'll give you a demo of that. There's an improved template experience. There's a lot of cool stuff. I'm going to cover as much as I can, but I'm not going to go super deep. I'm kind of skimming the surface simply because it would make the video too, too long. I will come back and do some deeper dive videos about some of these tools. Let's go ahead and get started. Here's a sample image, and you will notice right now Sky AI, the tool looks a little bit different. You can select your sky here, and then there are five different categories based on the kind of adjustment you need to make next to your photo. So first things first, sky selection, it is now visual browse. I love that. It's so much easier than, you know, Sunset 2 or whatever, and you're like, wait, is it Sunset 2 I want or Sunset 4? It doesn't matter. Now, because let's be honest, you may not care what the name is, but you care a whole lot what it looks like. Now there's visual browse. That's super helpful, I think, and super quick to just kind of get through, find the photo you want. I've got one here that I've already loaded. I'm going to go ahead and click and add that. This is actually a sky from Matt Seuss's Sky Pack. I've talked about that, that in previous videos. Link down below if you want to check it out. Here's the thing. You just saw it in action. I clicked, added the sunset. And as you can see, the sky was reflected automatically. Let me turn that off. There it is before, there it is after. Let me make one qualifying statement. This image is a long exposure of a river, at, which is obviously moving water. Long exposures of moving water, your reflection is probably not gonna be super crisp. So this is not probably the most realistically accurate representation, but it's a good demo of showing you how the tool works. So. Keep in mind, I'm talking about art here and how the tool works. I'm not trying to tell you this is really what it looked like because obviously you saw me add a new sky. Just wanted to point that out. So the I'll just go through these sections in order. Orientation, horizon blending, I need to do that here. That just pulls the horizon and tightens up that blend, for lack of a better word. Two new things here, vertical offset and horizontal offset. I'm just gonna go ahead and slide these so you can see how they work. Keep in mind what you're doing with each of them is either vertically or hor wait yeah vertically or horizontally. I had to get that direction straight. Moving that sky around your image, and when you do that, you will notice the reflection moves as well. Super cool, but something you have to be aware of because let me just show you. If I do vertical offset, you'll see that that starts going where the bottom of the sky uh, replacement image is going off the canvas. And if I do it this way, you can see that it's there's a gap there in the reflection. So just be super careful when you do those kind of things. But that's a super powerful and useful tool to have now here in Sky AI for moving the photo up or left and right. So horizontal offset. You can see as I drag it to the right, it's moving the sky to the right, but it's also kind of zooming it. So it's zooming it in and scooting it over. And if I go left, it does the same thing. Again, notice the reflection is going with it. The reflection is following. So I think that's super cool. I'm really happy about that. And I think the tool is working quite well. Rotation flip, I think that's pretty uh, pretty standard. Oh wait, you know what, rotation's new. I forget, I've been playing with this stuff for a while. So rotation, boom, I can just rotate the sky. So if I want those clouds in a little bit different spot, once again, the reflection is also rotating. So keep that in mind, very powerful, very cool. That's the orientation section. Let's go to mask refinement. Here you've got global, that's basically how much of that new sky is being dropped on top of the existing sky. Close gap and fix details, those are about refining the smaller parts. Fix details is new in this update and is basically for like if you have hair or something like that on a person outdoors and you put in a new sky, it'll help blend that together. Again, I will come back and do some more deep dives on this kind of stuff in future videos. Next up is scene relighting. I'm liking this one quite a bit. Relight strength, I'm using that and you can see it's kind of creating a little bit different impact on the reflection, which I think is great. And this relight saturation, I'm loving that, how it's impacting the saturation across the image. It's kind of subtle, but obviously the more you drag it to the right, the more of it you're getting. Relight human, if you have a human in the scene, that's gonna help you relight them to match the sunset. It's working really well. I'm pretty happy about that. 
I'm going to uh, leave those like that. Here's a slider. You actually may not use them in this order. I'm going through it just how they show up. But reflection, this is reflection amount. So you can increase or decrease the amount of that reflection that is showing in the water. So to the right, I'm getting more of that. It's getting a little bit brighter. So this is something where everything is going to be seasoned to taste and experiment to figure out what looks best on your photo. But that's a nice and helpful slider. And then you have sky adjustments. This was here before, the defocus, but now they have grain as well. So if your image has a little bit of grain and you had a new sky that's super smooth, you might need to go add a little bit of grain to it. That's how you can do it. Works really well. In this case, I actually might brighten the sky just a little bit to kind of match more so what that reflection looks like. And I think I've got a really nice looking result here. Let me turn this off. There it is before and there it is after. So that's kind of a quickie on Sky AI. It's working great. I'm having a lot of fun. I definitely think you have to experiment depending on the image, move the sky around, play with that orientation, play with the scene relighting, the mask refinement, all those kind of things, reflections, amount, all that kind of stuff. Just keep in mind, you want to play with that and experiment with it on every image to get it looking just right. Okay, that's a quickie on Sky AI. Next, let's talk about the new templates experience. Okay, let's say I take an image like this and I click on templates. You can look over here. There used to be little tabs on this upper right hand side. They are gone and everything for the templates section is right here in front of you. Again, at the top for this photo, these are the AI based recommendations for the image. The new thing here is as I scroll over, you'll see this. It's called the carbon collection. This is something that you can purchase in Luminar Marketplace. And so for this photo, these AI recommendations are taking into consideration any template packs that you've purchased in Luminar Marketplace. So if I click on purchased, you can see there's the carbon collection that sits there. It also showed up in for this photo. So I think that's pretty sweet. And in cleaning up and removing those tabs, that means these other sections are now here in your browse. So right under for this photo, you have favorites. These are the ones that you fave, of course. Templates, anything you've created are gonna, here's your section, you can click on that. Purchased, I showed you that. And legacy templates, these would be any of your uh, presets or looks that came over from like Luminar 4, for example. The other thing to note here in the template section is that all of these categories are now visual. And so you can browse these visually based on the photo for the category. Whereas in the past, some of them were photos and some of them were text. It might have been a little bit confusing. Now they're all photos. So I think that's much cleaner, much easier and a much better overall experience. One other nice little addition is that the histogram, once you open it, it will stay open on every image as you change images. In the previous version, when you had the histogram on, which you get to view and show histogram, you would see the histogram up here, but when you went to a different image, it would disappear. But now I can just click over to my next image, and as I rotate through these images, you can see that histogram is staying visible in that upper corner. By the way, that's also happening with the info panel down here in the right corner. So if you click on that, you can see your information. And as I move photo to photo, that information tab is just adjusting to the information for the photo that I've moved to. So you can keep that open and move through your photos if you're looking for something specific around the uh, info panel. Okay, I've gone back to this photo that I adjusted. I wanna show you the transformable texture overlays. You can now use PNGs with transparency. So I'm gonna click on local masking and add and add texture. And you now have the ability to place the texture as you can see. So first I'm gonna load the texture. Let me go ahead and grab that. I'm gonna go into this paper texture kit and I'm gonna come down here to this PNG file and click open. There you go. You can see that it's basically a frame with a semi-transparent border. It's a transparent PNG. You can now overlay that and then come in here and place texture, which allows me to move this a little bit if I need to. So this is going to come in really handy whenever you're overlaying a texture or something like a watermark. And I'll show you that in a minute to allow you to maneuver that around the screen. You can also expand this. So if I want to drag it some that way to get a little bit less frame, that will work. And I can do the same thing on that left hand side. Then I get my frame in place. I can just click place texture and it's set. Now, while I've got that on there, let me show you. I'll just add a little watermark. So I'm going to click Add Local Mask, and I'm going to click Texture again. And here I'm going to go to Load Texture, and I'm going to go back to my desktop and grab this little watermark file. It's a very small image. It scales them, by the way, as you can see, to fit. I'm going to click Place Texture, and I'm going to start shrinking this bad boy because it's way too big. Okay, I've shrunk it down a bit. So as you can see, I can move this around as necessary. 
And the cool thing also is that I can tilt it or rotate it. So if I want to stick it over here on the grass, I can just rotate it like that and just have my little watermark stuck in there. And then I can position it freely, rotate it as a little bit more if I need to. Keep in mind, you have blend mode. So that's white text on a black background, but I can come in here and change this to the lighten overlay mode. Click on place texture because I'm done with that. And you can see that I've just dropped in that watermark. So there it is before. And there it is now. So having these transformable texture overlays is going to have a huge impact on using things like borders and frames, any kind of texture if you need to move it around, watermarks, things like that. I can come back and show that in future videos as well, but it's a great addition to this local masking texture overlay tool. Got to show you two more things about Sky AI replacement while we're talking about it. And that is, I'm going to go ahead and stick this same sunset here on this one photo from Oregon. And I want to point out right down here in this bottom corner, if you look at the ripples that are in the sand, they stay there even though the sky has been replaced. So it's not just taking it and completely overlaying it, some kind of blend mode, I guess, underneath. But basically, it's taking, there you go, there it is without the new sky, and there it is with. So if you have water that's moving and you have some ripples and you want some reflection in it or something like this where you have a little bit of ripples in the sand, it's not just going to overwrite that and smooth it out. It is going to allow you to maintain some of that texture that's in your original image, even though you've replaced the sky. And here's a photo I got from Unsplash. I'll put the link down below. But once again, I'll just grab that same sunset just because, hey, we're having fun with it. Let me go ahead and add that. Okay, there's the sunset i'm going to just adjust the reflection amount something about like that i'm going to do some scene relighting relight saturation maybe some relight strength i like the relight strength it's really bringing up that reflection a little bit more sky adjustments i might go a little bit brighter just to balance those out and here's where i want to show you this relight human so it basically has awareness of the human in the scene and allows you to relight them to perhaps better match the lighting conditions so as you can see you may not expect them to be as bright as they are because if you look at the original lighting conditions it's basically blown out behind her but there you go and now I can relight human and it's gonna darken her a little bit which I think has a nice a little bit more realistic look to the photo so keep that in mind relight human new addition to sky AI as well working pretty nicely the other thing I'm pretty jazzed about is if I zoom in here if you look at her hair I mean, the sky, the way it replaced around it looks pretty good. I, mean, I didn't do anything honestly there it is before and there it is after I feel like that masking it's improved from before. So something to think about. The tools are pretty amazing. I'm having a lot of fun. It is a free update. As, as I said, if you haven't yet gotten it, click on Luminar AI in the upper left menu. Click on check for updates. Keep in mind, sometimes when these new updates are out, they roll out kind of across time zones around the globe. So if it's not available to you right now, hang tight, it's coming. But that's a quick overview and my first look about Luminar AI update two. Hope it gives you some insights about what the new additions, new features are, new tools, and how they work. I'll be back soon with more stuff. Thanks for watching, my friends. Have fun editing out there. I'll see you in the next video, and adios.